As always, if you haven't done so yet, please make sure you pause the video and try to answer this question on your own first before listening on. The goal here is to take this relatively complex circuit that's made up of capacitors and simplify it step by step until we have a circuit containing only one capacitor. And to do that, we're going to first combine these two capacitors into a single equivalent capacitor. Now we'll notice that those two are in series with one another, so we have to follow the following equation. And in this equation, C1 and C2, of course, would represent the capacitances of these two capacitors. So we'll go ahead and fill in 15 microfarads for C1 and 3 microfarads for C2. And when we add those together on the right-hand side, we should get 2 fifths. And then when we invert both sides of the equation, which is a little algebraic trick that we can do, we have CEQ over 1, or if we prefer just CEQ, is equal to 5 over 2 which we can say is 2.5, and that's in microfarads. So when we combine these two capacitors, we're going to have a single equivalent capacitor whose capacitance is 2.5 microfarads. Let's draw a picture of that to show what that looks like. And so here is that capacitor, which again came from these two after combining them. Next, we can combine this capacitor with this capacitor right here. Now we'll notice that those two capacitors are in parallel with one another. When capacitors are in parallel, the equivalent capacitance is simply the sum of those two capacitors. So this would be C1 and this would be C2. When we add them together, we're going to end up with 8.5 microfarads. So let's redraw the circuit again, but let's combine these two into a single equivalent capacitor. And so there we have it, the 8.5 microfarad capacitor. Now finally, we can combine these two into a single equivalent capacitor. These are in series, so we're going to go back to the first equation that we started with in order to determine the equivalent capacitance of those two series capacitors. So we'll plug in 8.5 for C1 and 20 for C2. And then when you add the right hand side, perhaps using your calculator in this case, you're going to have 57 over 340. Let's invert both sides of the equation and we would see that CEQ is 340 over 57 which is approximately 5.96 microfarads. So let's redraw the circuit one last time and combine these two into a single equivalent capacitor. And so we have accomplished the goal that we set for ourselves. We have taken a relatively complex circuit of multiple capacitors and simplified it down to a single capacitor whose equivalent capacitance is 5.96 microfarads. That becomes the correct answer to part A. Now we move on to part B and we attempt to determine the charge in each capacitor. First, let's note that the potential difference between the two points is given to us as 15 volts. So we can mark that as delta V. Now we notice that we have the volts as well as the capacitance and that allows us to calculate the charge actually because the charge is equal to capacitance times the the volts essentially. So if we take these two quantities and multiply them, we're going to be able to get the charge. And when we calculate that, we get roughly 89.5 microcoulombs. Notice the unit is microcoulombs because we're using microfarads for the capacitance. So let's note that the charge there is 89.5 microcoulombs. Now what we do is we move backwards step by step to get ourselves to the original circuit. And when we move backwards, we have to obey the following rules. We're going to bring charge backwards when moving to series and bring volts backwards when moving to parallel. Let's take a look at how those rules would apply. For example, when we move backwards from this capacitor to these two, these two are in series. And according to the rules, we're going to bring the charge backwards to that series arrangement. Recall that the charge on this capacitor was 89.5 microcoulombs. That means that the charge on each of these two, because they're in series, will also be 89.5 microcoulombs. Now we're not going to bring with us the volts because these are in series. We only bring with us the charge. However, we know that the volts is going to equal the charge divided by the capacitance. So if we take the charge of 89.5 and divide it by the capacitance of 8.5, that's going to give us the volts on this capacitor. And then the, we do the same thing for the second capacitor as well. And so when we do that, we get roughly 10.5 volts for the first capacitor and roughly 4.47 volts for the second capacitor. Again, we were following this equation right here. We will next move back to the second picture that we had originally drawn. And notice that when we move from this capacitor backwards, 
that it came from these two and that these two were in parallel with one another. And since we're moving backwards to a parallel arrangement, we're going to bring with us the volts. So we'll take the 10.5 volts that was on this capacitor and apply it to both of these capacitors here. For this capacitor, when we move backwards, we'll notice there's actually no difference between this capacitor and this one here. So we can actually bring with us both the charge and the volts. Now back to these two capacitors, we don't know the charge on them, we only have the volts and the capacitance, but that's okay because charge is equal to capacitance times the volts. So if we take the capacitance and multiply it by the volts, that's going to give us the charge for this one as well as for this one. So we'll go ahead and multiply the capacitance and the volts, and when we do that we get roughly 26.3 microcoulombs here, and when we multiply this capacitance by this volts we get roughly 63 microcoulombs. Now finally, we can move backwards to the original picture. Let's move from this capacitor backwards to the two from which it came. Notice that these two are in series with one another. So once again, following our rules, when we move backwards to series, we're going to bring with us the charge. So the 26.3 microcoulombs is going to apply for both this capacitor as well as this one here. When we move backwards from this capacitor to where it came from, nothing changes. These two capacitors are the same. So the 63 microcoulombs of charge on that capacitor will still be the 63 microcoulombs on this one. And finally, when we move backwards from this capacitor to here, again, it's the same thing. There's no difference between this and this capacitor. So the 89.5 microcoulombs that we had determined will carry backwards over to here. And so we have the charges on each of the four capacitors. And that solves part B.